When Professor Monica Ayeko started researching insects for food, she did not imagine that it could grow to what it is today. Her research interest was in edible insects and the indigenous knowledge on insects available in Lake Victoria region. This passion resulted into the birth of the African Center of Excellence in sustainable use of insects as food and feeds, insect feeds, with Professor Ayeko as the principal investigator. We started by collecting the insects from the wild because we didn't have a rearing stock. So we just collected uh, the wild insects from around the campus here. And from that, we developed now a stock, which we have at our farm. And we have over thousands of crickets. And we have been uh, harvesting crickets from our university farm for over one year now. When they started collecting wild crickets, they did not know what the crickets ate or what young crickets looked like. The crickets were put in a glass cage and observed, and were given a variety of feeds such as fruits and vegetables, dried bread and potatoes. The researchers expected the crickets to nibble at any of those foods. After about one week, we managed to get the, the pinheads, which were tiny little insects. We also didn't know how the pinheads looked like, but we were experimenting, so they grew up Eventually, after two weeks, we could say that, oh, yes, these are uh, uh, baby crickets. So from there, we enlarged our production. We put them in bigger cages. We put them in big basins and uh, big buckets, and we developed our stock. Bigger iron roof shelters were built, and the crickets were kept on a variety of feeds, plenty of water, and close observation. The team kept collecting eggs until it expanded, into a bigger farm. INSA Foods is a World Bank financed Africa Center of Excellence based at Jaramogi Oginga Odinga University of Science and Technology, JUST. The goal of INSA Foods is to achieve a long term food and nutritional security by using insects as a cost effective source of protein and other nutrients for food and feeds. Edible insects are nutritious and they grow and reproduce fast. The center has several masters and PhD programs, including the flagship masters and the PhD program in food security and sustainable agriculture. We have organized our, pro our program in a way that it will include a very minimal class lecture uh, teaching, but we want to involve more pr practical and field experiences uh, for the students so that they get an, a deep understanding of the practical application of, uh, of, the, of the program in food security. Because food security is not about uh, giving lectures in the, in the class. It's about being in the field there and getting products that can actually uh, reduce uh, malnutrition. So the program is, is field-based, it's practical-based, and also interaction with the community will be highly encouraged so that we generate uh, the right information that we can utilize. Insects are very active during the day so the best time to harvest crickets is in the morning between 6 and 7 a.m. And before we harvest them, the previous night we make sure that we give them good fruits or good vegetables normally consumed by human beings. We don't harvest crickets with chicken feed. So we give them fruits and vegetables just to clean the gut. And uh, so that when, uh, when not necessarily cleaning the gut, but you will be sure that uh, the, the gut does not contain uh, chicken feed, but a fruit or a vegetable that you will be comfortable eating. But if we don't feed them on fruits and vegetables before harvesting, we make them fast overnight. To prepare them, the crickets are blanched, dried with electric dryer, solar dryer, or simply spread out on a mat in the sun. When the cricket is fully dried, you grind with a household blender or a coffee grinder to get very fine flour. When the crickets are in the powder form, you can do a lot of things with it. You can prepare from biscuits to cakes, and pancakes, fritters, and some of the products that you may have uh, uh, seen in our website. We make quite a variety of uh, processed products 
from the powder. Because just a little powder goes a long way. You mix with uh, normal wheat flour to bind. The cricket powder itself doesn't bind well. So you have to put in a little bit of, uh, you have to put in uh, the ratio of uh, about one to two or one to three based on how strong the flavor of cricket you want. Our, big, our biscuits are one to three. The ratio of one, bis one cricket to three, uh, to three wheat flour so that the cricket powder is not that much concentrated. Then you add ordinary baking stuff like uh, baking powder, sugar, and uh, all the other things that go into. Then you make the normal dough, you roll it out and cut and bake normally. Alternatively, after blanching, you can also deep fry the cricket or stir fry to get nice crisp whole cricket ready for eating. Whole cricket is best eaten at four months before it matures and hardens. At four months, it is tender and succulent and can be eaten with a variety of dishes such as potatoes, rice and ugali. At the time of this interview, Insa Foods had just acquired a biscuit making machine. This machine will be able to produce a maximum of uh, three, 3,000 biscuits per hour because the funnel here can receive quite a lot of crickets and uh, other flour mixed together. But once it is turned on and you have put here the correct mixture, you turn it off and it will be able to grind and brand. This is uh, the machine made specifically for juice for Insta Foods, with our Insta Food Juicer Food. So we'll be able to, to we'll be able to grind, mix, cut, and roll it out. And uh, this part will be pushed out, and they fall on the tray. They fall on the. They arrange themselves on the tray and slowly be put back into the machine and it is baked automatically. I can't wait to use it because it looks like it's going to make the work very easy. Students have piqued interest in research in edible insects. Mr. Kennedy Vati Mutuku graduated with a first class honors in agribusiness management from Just, and the following year he rejoined Just for a master's of science in food security and sustainable agriculture under Insa Foods. I'm interested in doing a, a value chain analysis of this cricket farming with an intent of um, seeing how it is that uh, each and every actor in the value chain analysis is receiving their expected returns because the issue is efficiency of the value chain. And if the value chain is to be efficient, then it means that each and every actor is to receive their desired returns. Because if one actor is not being efficient, then such clouds the rest of the value chain. And uh, as we do this value chain, the objective is to achieve sustainability of cricket farming. He says, for cricket's farming to thrive, cricket farmers must reap benefits. As much as we are, we are interested in solving food security issues and mal, uh, issues of malnutrition as well, we have actors in this value chain. And these actors at the end of the day should receive their fair return on their investment. That is as much as, uh, because apart from uh, the people that are eating these crickets, we have farmers that are doing this as a business. So the end goal is that they make profit. Students, especially those at the School of Agriculture, have been encouraged to explore the different things that could be done with different types of insects. It is not just students that have picked up interest in the crickets. People from the community have started cricket rearing. There are women groups that uh, we work with from the whole of this region. We show them how to rear the crickets, how to harvest process, and they have been making biscuits. During exhibitions, you get a lot of a uh, different variety of uh, biscuits made out of uh, crickets in the area. And they will all tell you we learned the technology from Joe's. Some will tell you we learned from some NGOs, but those NGOs learn from us because we were the first institution in the region to really try uh, cricket rearing and processing. Mrs. Prisca Tieno had been rearing crickets for about three months and had 11 buckets of crickets at the time of this interview. Each bucket has 100 to 250 crickets, which she feeds on chicken growers' feed. She started the venture after short course in cricket rearing and value addition by Insefoods. Initially, I used to do mutumba, 
as uh, as uh, my business after the training i thought it was maybe to venture into this because i thought most people still are not aware of this so let me take advantage of it be before people okay. uh, most people got to get into it atieno is one of the 34 local farmers trained by Insa Foods in cricket rearing. Compared to Mitumba business, Atieno says cricket farming is better. This is much more profitable and it's easier. Yeah, it doesn't involve, there is no hard work. Insa Foods conducts short courses to equip farmers with knowledge in insect rearing as an income generating enterprise. It was envisaged that the trained farmers would cascade the technology in their neighborhoods and establish cricket rearing hubs in their locations. I have uh, three months old crickets. I have uh, a number of eggs of which I'll, I'll be using to transfer to the remaining buckets and hoping to succeed. Peter Otieno Ara is another cricket farmer. He is a fish farmer and was initially harvesting crickets to feed his fish. Then he learned that Inse Foods was buying crickets. He started to supply insects to Inse Foods. He also started cricket rearing. I don't have uh, enough materials, e.g. The, the system of keeping them. That's the reason why I was thinking about making a pen, which I can have a very big number. Inse Foods has signed agreements with private sector partners to commercialize their enterprise. They have a partnership with the National Museum of Kenya to develop a biodiversity repository of insects for food and feed, especially those on the verge of extinction. The center has developed a business plan that is guiding its commercialization process. And these uh, products from, uh, from the insects, right now they have been based in the laboratory, but we have received now a patent which is going to guide the center in putting the products uh, on the market with the approval of uh, necessary bodies, including CAPS. And therefore, uh, the, the center is envisioning to see uh, uh, insect products in our, on our shelves, both in supermarkets and also local uh, shops.